is king. But there was a day when few people believed that cotton would have as many uses as it does in today's world. Cotton has been known for many hundreds of years, but it was not usable on a large scale until the beginning of the 19th century. In 1781, a New England farm boy named Eli Whitney was beginning to make a name for himself as a manufacturer of hat pins for ladies' bonnets. A few years later, young Eli set his fingers to a harder task, getting the seeds out of cotton. For thousands of years, the only way to separate cotton seeds from cotton fibers had been to pull out the seeds by hand, a slow, costly, tedious task. In 10 days, Whitney developed the model of a machine that was to revolutionize the cotton industry. The cotton gin was a simple device, but it took the seeds out of cotton, and that was what the South had been waiting for. Some of the southern states voted Whitney a royalty for his invention, but he had to spend most of his money to defend his rights in marketing the new cotton gin. Those who had started to emigrate from the South in search of a better opportunity learned of the new machine and took new hope. The value of cotton land trebled overnight. All over the world, the impact of this simple invention was felt almost immediately. Eli Whitney put together a few boards and rollers and gave the world a giant industry. Cotton was king. Never before had anyone removed seeds from cotton so quickly and easily and surely. Never had anyone dreamed that a machine could do so much. Here was an invention that did, in a few minutes, the work that took a pioneer's family a whole evening to do by hand as they sat around the fire. Here, in a small wooden box, was all that was needed to demonstrate the value of cotton as a world crop. The principles employed in Whitney's first machine have been retained in the modern cotton gin. Inside the gin, the cotton falls through the hopper and hits a grid where it comes into the path of revolving teeth. The teeth grab the fibers and pull them through the narrow openings of the grid. The seeds are larger than the openings. They can't pass through. They fall to the floor. The fibers are swept off the revolving saw teeth and out of the gin. The modern gin seems much different, certainly much larger, than the experimental gins of Whitney's day. But the real difference lies not in the principle used to take out the seeds but in the fact that new machinery has been added to clean the cotton and carry a large amount of cotton through the gin, 